What is going on ladies and gents, Michael or Legacy Killer HD back today with a new video for you. Today we're going to be discussing the future of Bethesda games. This isn't necessarily just a Elder Scrolls 6 video, this is really just concentrating on their future titles. So yes, this does involve the Elder Scrolls 6, but it also involves like Starfield, which is the rumored title coming from Bethesda Game Studio sometime in the future, and then the possibility probably of an Elder Scrolls or Fallout spin-off. Now I chose a couple of huge topics from the last couple of videos I've made about the Elder Scrolls 6 and how it really could be essential for any future Bethesda Game Studios title. So I'm going to be going through pretty much a new engine, how that really is just needed by now, and then the possibility of maybe a voice protagonist, which a lot of people, there's mixed reaction on that, and then there's also the topic of settlement building and if they should continue on. But if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow me on Twitter and like the video if you do enjoy or find any informative value, and make sure to dive into the comment section of the video throughout and let me know what your thoughts are on these three topics. So let's start with the biggest one, and that is the new engine possibility. Now right before we actually get into this discussion, I want to throw some comments on the screen. These are just from some of my recent videos, one namely being the top 10 things I think is needed in the next Elder Scrolls 6. It's just some crazy amount of likes attached to these comments. For a lot of people discussing that it's time for a new engine and Bethesda really needs to invest the time into giving us something that's a little bit less limited. That's what I felt like with Fallout 4 and even going back to Skyrim, there felt like there was a lot of limitation. What a new engine could bring us is pretty much huge battles. We could see Thalmor versus the Empire and thousands of troops, thousands of soldiers, actual huge war battles, something that I've criticized in some of my past videos, saying that we haven't had that yet, not not in any Elder Scrolls or even Fallout game. If you look at Fallout 4, the big battles, big ending, there really isn't a war, it just it feels flat, you know, there's random NPCs that load ahead of you, but that's it, maybe a squadron of 6-7 soldiers. I want to see huge battles, especially with a medieval type of game that you could say, I guess, Elder Scrolls represents. I feel like that would be absolutely insane, the different types of magic flowing through the battlefield, the swords, the there's just so many different types of endless possibilities that they could bring to us with this. And then we gotta get rid of the loading screens. One of the biggest downfalls of any Elder Scrolls or Fallout game so far is that every different place I go to, there's a different fucking loading screen. Sorry for the language, but it's needed to be said. I hate loading screens. I think I even swore last time I talked about loading screens. It just pisses me off every time I see it. We gotta get away from these graphics. It's time. I mean, the Gamebryo engine, which we're technically still on, the creation engine that they call is technically just an updated version of the Gamebryo engine. Time to move away from that. It's time to make their own engine or go off the Void engine. That's what uh, Dishonored 2 is using right now, and I actually don't see, I mean, I've heard a lot of people discussing the possibility of Bethesda using that, and I think that they could use this to their advantage. They could make this work in a lot of different types of ways, and it would be a lot of fun to see what they could do on that type of engine. And now my last thing with a new engine is cities have to get bigger with NPCs. I know some people may disagree with this. Maybe in the Fallout universe it may make sense to have smaller little towns, but when you have such so much things going on in like Diamond City you would expect there to be more dwellers or more activities going on. That's my biggest criticism. When you play The Witcher 3, you see so many activities, so much immersion, so much fun going on through these cities. And in an Elder Scrolls game, you want there to be that. I mean, when you're going into Whiterun, or even Markoth, or even Dawnstart, there's not many NPCs. There's maybe 10 to 15, they're all quiet, nobody says anything. It's, it's really dead, you know? And I feel like if you're going to be making these different types of settings, there needs to be NPCs around you. Different types of characters to explore. I don't need to hear a life story, some people have even said that, but just have Having some type of quest attached to them or random miscellaneous um, encounters would be pretty cool. Something that I feel like Bethesda hasn't necessarily attached to. Dive into the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think a new engine is needed and why. These are just a couple little things attached to why a new engine is needed. I could brainstorm probably a hundred more. It just really is needed by now and I really hope Bethesda takes their time with this and they invest it into their future titles. I mean, we don't know exactly what Starfield is going to be about or if it actually is Bethesda's next title, but it's there's a lot of different types of things attached to this that just makes a lot of sense. But being that Bethesda wants to make new different types of titles, I don't know how Starfield would look like if they do run it on a creation engine again. And I know a lot of people would criticize them again for this, but maybe it's Elder Scrolls 6 down the road where we get a new engine. That would be disappointing just because I would prefer to see it on some of their newer titles coming out in the next couple of years. Move on to the next topic, and that is a voice protagonist. Probably one of the craziest things a lot of debate on this one, and I personally think it's time to get rid of it. I mean, it was a nice thing in Fallout 4. I like it, I just don't see it working in Elder Scrolls 6. But could it work in like a Starfield or a spin-off for an Elder Scrolls or Fallout?
Fallout? Sure. But I just feel like Elder Scrolls 6, there's too many races and you can make male and female versions. It just it doesn't work exactly in my mind. If you make it a certain race, it's just going to sound funny if you have a Khajiit sounding like a Nord or a Nord sounding like an Argonian. There's just so many different ways that they would have to make this work. And they would have to have at least, I would think, maybe like 20 different voice actors. And I just don't see them investing all that time into it. And it also takes away from the role playing aspect. When I play these games, I actually have my own version of what I'm actually playing this person as. And when I hear somebody talking or making certain types of emotions, it makes me takes me out of that role playing way I guess you could say. Definitely I want to know what you guys think about this. I just feel like that was a mistake with Fallout 4. They should have just kept it how it was. Kind of missed that Ron Perlman war war never changes type of deal but I guess it's cool having that voice protagonist open up the game but definitely I don't think they should continue on this. Could they do this in another Fallout or Elder Scrolls game? Sure. Elder Scrolls 6? No. Now let's get on to the last topic and that is settlement building. Probably the one of the biggest and craziest things that they've introduced, and that was introduced in the late into Skyrim. It's really fun, it's just the DLCs in Fallout 4 suffered because of this. It should have never been, I guess, one of the strongholds of Fallout 4, and unfortunately it was. We all wanted story quest DLCs, and we didn't unfortunately get it. That's why a lot of people paid the $50 after the original went up from 30 to 50 and now there's a lot of regrets within the community, and I can see why. I mean, I get that they invest a lot of time in this, but when you have modders doing the exact same things, it just, it doesn't work, and I feel like Bethesda Game Studios shouldn't have done that and I feel like if they move forward I hope they learn their lesson this time around and they build DLCs around quest and story instead of settlement building and that there's also a great debate going on through the community saying most of this stuff probably should have been in the main game to begin with. Now when you get into the debate about settlement building moving forward I could see it in a Starfield or something but I just don't want it to cover up all the DLC or whatever they have planned on later on. There needs to be an importance to this. It just felt like it was a wasted thing. You build up a fort and what happens? You get maybe one attack that's about it. It's just really boring in a lot of ways just because there isn't any importance to this. They add quest or story to it or something to it, maybe even have factions actually battling other factions where there's some type of sieges going on. But in Fallout 4, we got a little bit of a taste of that with the castle and some certain quests attached to it, but that was about it. And as you play throughout the game, you need to have some type of importance or the average player is not going to actually even explore this. But make sure you guys dive into the comment section of the video. Let me know what you think about this. Just a quick video discussing some of the bigger things that I know a lot of people are really interested in Bethesda Game Studios titles. Make sure you like the video if you did enjoy it and make sure to dive into the comments. Let me know your thoughts and subscribe for more Bethesda Game Studios titles and all kinds of news and information and see you guys later.